Well, it's been a while since I last did a Pokemon video, huh? Sorry I've had a bit of a hiatus from speedpaint videos lately. The Wizard and Animatic took longer than I expected, and I also wanted to take a bit of a mental health break. Twice. But rest assured, we're finally back to doing videos with voiceover. So I wanted to make another Pokemon video because, well, it's a familiar territory, and these Pokemon videos tend to be my most popular. But I didn't really have any big ideas after the whole Deep Type trilogy, so I decided to go simple instead, and just use some random type swaps of canon Pokemon. I used a random number generator to determine both the Pokemon and the types we'll be working with. I rolled the numbers three times, looked at my results, and decided to roll nine times instead. Then I took my favourite outcome from each set of three, and now we have it! Three random type swaps to draw from! So yeah, that's our video. I'm gonna draw these guys and tell you all my thoughts. Let's get going! Okay, the first random type swap we're dealing with is a steel type Venomoth. As you can see, I'm starting by drawing out the shapes of the original design. But the thing is, if you watch my previous Pokemon videos, you'll see that I drew the initial sketches off to the side, whereas here I'm flat out tracing, which isn't something I'd encourage, even if it is just for the sketch. I guess I was feeling more insecure this time around, and to be fair, it's been a good while since I lost during the Pokemon style. I'll have to break out of that bad habit, but until then, let's talk about Venomoth. Now usually I put in a good bit of research when I'm designing a Pokemon, to make sure I've got some good inspiration and ideas. Pokemon drawing is still a bit out of my comfort zone, so I wanted to be prepared in advance to make things easier. Though with this video, I actually played pretty fast and loose with the research. I just looked up Metal Moth online and searched for images for inspiration. And I found this Metal Skull Moth accessory, which I thought looked cool. At first I was considering shaping the wings of the Venomoth to match this accessory, but I quickly found that this wasn't a good idea at my current skill level. I'm still a beginner when it comes to drawing Pokemon, so because of that, I decided to not stray too far from the original design. But the thing is, I still wanted to change Venomoth's silhouette in some way. Generally it's a good idea to do this when making a variant of an already existing Pokemon, to help them stand out more from the original. Like, look at the Nola Ninetales, for instance. She's got a lot more wispy shape language compared to the original. That's a great way to help the two forms stand out. So with Venomoth, I tried to stylize the wings to look more artificial. At first I was going for a segmented look, being inspired by the structure of Skarmory's wings. But after a good while of struggling to make it work, I instead decided to go for a much sleeker, I guess more futuristic look. I was very much inspired by the Leps flight suits in Artemis Fowl, if any of you have read that book series. But I also pulled inspiration from another bug Pokemon, Iron Moth. As for the rest of this design, I changed the zigzag pattern on Venomoth's abdomen to more of a sleek curved line pattern, this being inspired by the metal accessory I mentioned earlier. I also changed the shape of the head to look like some sort of metal helmet. I ended up doing a similar thing that I did with Alion, the seal type evolution that I showed in an earlier video. In fact, I originally had a bit of a night idea after I drew that helmet, which is why I tried to give this Venomoth more of an upright stance. But I ditched the idea because I didn't want to make them too similar to Alion. But anyway, now we get to the colours and shading. Because I swear that every time I draw in my Pokemon style I do things completely differently, I guess it goes to show that I'm figuring stuff out. This time around, I heavily referenced the official art of these Pokemon, so I could choose the colours and shadow positions a lot more accurately. Of course, I still haven't got the style perfectly down, the shading is a bit more painty in the official art, but I don't really know how to make it work. I have not done a lot of experimenting with critter brushes, maybe I should put some time aside for that. But anyway, here's the final Venomoth. I like how this piece came out, particularly the colours. I think the Pokemon style has really pleasant colour palettes, so studying them was a great idea. Okay, on to the next! So type swap number two is an ice type Apom. This design ended up being the most simple of the three, because I had a pretty strong concept right from the start. Apom's whole deal is having a big hand at the end of his tail, and I thought it would be cool to have an ice type Apom who uses that hand to throw snowballs. It was a good fit for the Pokemon's mischievous personality, and it also ties into the snow throw game in Johto's Pokeathlon, fitting since that's Apom's home region. Now in terms of actually drawing this Apom, I'll admit that this was mostly just a recolor. I was originally thinking of basing this on a white monkey, and looked up real world monkeys with white fur, but I didn't think a pink face would be a good match for Apom. Besides, just taking a real world animal's colors is a pretty boring way out, especially since regular Apom is purple and yellow, 
You won't find monkeys like that in the real world. Instead, I made the purple fur blue and the yellow fur white. I initially tried the opposite, but found he looked off with a blue face. Then I added some extra tufts to Apon's arms, legs and tail to imply that he has thicker fur to keep him warm in the cold. Like with Venomoth's wings, the fur tufts helped to change up the silhouette and make this variant more easily identifiable. I also ended up changing the colour arrangement of the tail so that the tail itself is light while the hand is dark, mostly because a white hand holding a white snowball might blend in a bit too much. Speaking of the snowball, it was a bit of a struggle getting the hand to look right holding it, but I made it there in the end. On the whole, as simple as this apon was, I do still like how the piece came out. Sure, the design hasn't changed much, but I think I changed it just enough to stand out from the original. Plus I really like the inclusion of the snowball. I imagine that because of the whole concept of throwing snowballs, this variant would really stand out from the original in terms of animations and stuff. I'd like to see more regional variants like that. If you can think of any ideas for this sort of thing, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll draw them in another video, who knows? But anyway, here's the finished art. As you can see, I adjusted the colours after I stopped recording, and I also changed the rendering of the snowball, so that it stands out more from the rendering of the body. So the third type swap I was going to draw, well it was going to be a dragon type go-goat. It was a cool concept and I had some strong ideas for it, like I'd give him a long neck and a tail and really make his shape different from the original. But uh, that didn't turn out well. I really didn't like how this go-go came out. Like, this is genuinely one of my least favourite things I've ever drawn. I did go back and modify him a bit, but I still wasn't a fan. I quickly came to realise that this just wasn't working, so I took a step back and re-rolled the randomizer. And after a couple of randomizer spins, I ended up settling on a water-type Gallade. Well actually, I did consider going with a ground-type Celebi, but I figured that was too simple of a design to end off on. I wanted something bigger to really round out this video, and a fully evolved Pokemon like Gallade was definitely going to deliver for me. Plus, I had some pretty strong ideas on what I could do with a water-type Gallade from the start. I've been watching Avatar The Last Airbender for the first time lately, I'm still on book 2 so no spoilers, and I really like the look and style of the water bending in that show. I love how it's almost dance-like, and the way the water flows definitely complements that. And hey! Gallade's a pretty graceful Pokemon, with long arm blades that are perfectly fit to swing and flow around. So there we have it, there's our concept! So for this final piece, I was determined to draw a more interesting pose than I did for the other two type swaps. I checked on the Avatar wiki, and found that the movements of the waterbenders are based on the martial art Tai Chi. I looked up a Tai Chi practitioner, and I found this pretty cool pose that I translated onto Gallade as best as I could. Later on, I also looked up a Tai Chi tutorial video on YouTube to get the flow of the arms to look right. Now while I had a very strong idea for the concept of this Pokemon, I was slightly less sure of how to make the design differ from regular Gallade. Beyond the colours of course, but we'll get there. I ended up changing the pattern on the torso so that it had two points instead of one, in order to make it look more like a Tai Chi uniform. I also tried to make the face tufts and head blade more curved and flowy to resemble waves of water. Then for the colours, I initially wanted to try a royal blue, before realising that shiny Gallade already has that colour. So I shifted gears to cyan, and moved the royal blue to the head blade. I left the chest spikes the same reddish pink, because they're the defining trait of this evolution line, and I wanted to keep consistency. I also made the white skin more of a darker bluish white, to stand out a bit more from the cyan, and to help this form feel more distinct from the original in general. Now when it came to the flowing water, I wanted to make sure that I matched the way that water is drawn in the Pokemon style. And to be fair, there weren't a lot of good examples, but I think it's always good to study details like this when you're trying to replicate other art styles. In the end, I decided to use Palafin's gloves and cape thing as my reference to stylized water. At the end of this speed paint, I also considered adding a spray effect to the water, but it felt off brand for the Pokemon style, which is meant to be very simple and shape oriented. So I decided to scrap it. And now we are, our third and final type swap. Like with Apom, I think this variant would work better in the context of an actual game, since they'd need different animations to carry the Tai Chi waterbending theme, but simple as it is, I do like how this turned out. So there we have it, three quick Pokemon type swaps. I do think these designs turned out very simple, but in terms of the shading, this is definitely the closest I've gotten to the official Pokemon style. And hey, what did you guys think? 
me which one was your favourite in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, why not hit the like button or subscribe? You can also follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my art. Not on Twitter though, I'm done with that website now. But anyway, my next video... I'm honestly not sure. I might draw more Pokemon, but I'm really wanting to draw some more humans on this channel. There are a lot more in my wheelhouse. We'll see what the future has in store, but until then, thanks for watching. Stay hopeful, don't give up on your dreams, and uh, I didn't actually have a third quip this time. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. <laughs>